Um, yeah, so good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Allison Ball. I'm the Director of Marketing for Alicio, and I'm really excited to have Damari Perez here today, along with Lindsay Weisenberger. Um, the three of us, Damari is going to be your presenter, I'm your co-host, and Lindsay's going to be manning the chat. And we're really excited to have Damari featured on our second year of the client webinar series. So our, we're going to take you through how to balance competing priorities as a, as a woman in leadership. Let's go to the next slide so we can quickly cover what you're going to be, go through what you're going to be covering today, Damari. So here's our agenda. Um, but what I want to make sure everybody understands is that this is a completely safe space. We are all leaders of different types, whether we have the word manager or director or vice president in our in our title, we're all leaders. And I also want to be very welcoming for the men on the call. Um, thank you so much for joining us because not only is your allyship important, um, you're gonna get tips and tricks and things that really are just appropriate to humans. But you will hear us lean in a little bit into the challenges that female leaders face. And Damari is also going to help you understand her gold standard mindset. And then we'll cover a little bit why client experience is really important to your balanced life. And we should have plenty of time for Q and A. Um, as far as Q&A goes, little housekeeping, please do, if you think of a question and you want to ask it, go ahead, ask it in the chat or ask it in the Q&A. Those are at the bottom of the, of the, the Zoom uh, window there. You can just move your mouse down. And uh, Lindsay and I will be looking at those and, and kind of combing through and deciding when we, when we answer. We want to leave Damari free to, to do her fabulous presentation without having to worry about monitoring the chat. So thank you. And let's go ahead and get started. Tamari, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Lindsay, for uh, putting this together and also Lizio. Um, my name is Damari Perez. And let's see why my arrow is not working. There we go. <laughs> so um, I am the co-founder of the Gold Standard Accounting and Tax. We are a full-service tax firm here in um, Huntington Beach, California. Um, I personally love to help business owners truly find the gold in their business and understanding their financials uh, because I believe that empowering them in money and understanding their financials can help them grow and scale and do all the things that they want to as business owners and not have to worry so much about their bookkeeping or taxes and all those good things, right? That's why they have us as planners. Um, today, I appreciate Lizio for having me on and you will hear me mention Lizio here and there because it is a software that I use and I'm very happy to use it. So I'm excited to share that also with you how our firm is changing the way of the client experience in the year of the client. So thank you guys. Um, we're going to talk about unpacking the challenges we face as female leaders and in leadership, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you have to have a specific title like Allison said. We are leaders in our homes, we're leaders with our friends, uh, we have these interchangeable roles that happen right. So sometimes you might be a leader, sometimes you might be a follower, but for the most part, all of us have that role in our life at some point to be a leader, to be called to be a leader. Now, we're gonna talk about what those challenges are. And I know the struggle is real. And I'm pretty sure most of you, please feel free to comment and um, give us some of your feedback because I know a lot of us have faced some of these challenges. And something that doesn't get talked about quite often and maybe, maybe some of you have thought about this, maybe not, but the workforce over decades has been created for the working man. And no offense to any fellas out there, okay guys? Um, but it has been created for the working man because in the past, men were working, women were at home taking care of kids. And so for men, um, the kids, the family takes the back seat and what happens they they're the working force so they get to work 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 while um the woman stays at home taking care of the kids and they don't have that as a competing priority for themselves now i'm going to go through 
Okay, I'm gonna go back here. Now, women traditionally, we have to juggle more things in life because we have different roles. If you have kids, motherhood, if you have family you're taking care of, or if you're married, things like that. We have all these different roles that we have to meet and expectations we have to meet. And not only in our careers, but in our home and in our life. So when we're thinking about the work culture and the work environment um, and how it was created for the working man, this is where we have to work towards changing that, that environment for ourselves so that we're able to have a balanced life and the life that we truly desire to live, right? Because we want to be able to have input in our careers, but we also want to give balance to our home life, to our children, to our families. Now, let's go to the next one. How to create, how do we create a more balanced life with a gold standard mindset. And this is the mindset that I have applied. And trust me, it's been over mistakes, errors, <laughs> and all those things, because I've had to learn myself how to be able to balance these things in my own life. And we're going to go here to learn when to say no. I know most of us probably struggle with this one, right? <laughs> well, it's really hard, isn't it? We're conditioned to not we're actually conditioned from being little children all the way up we're conditioned to to say yes to say yes yeah but this we're, is a really tricky one i'm imagining a lot of people would struggle with this one yes very much because a lot of times we don't know when to say no even when it doesn't feel right we still don't know when to say no so let's talk about how we can create our strength how we can build strength to be able to say no so for me, the first thing is understanding your boundaries. And the reason why understanding your boundaries is so important is because when you understand your boundaries, you can then teach others to respect your boundaries. If you do not respect your time or your boundaries, other people will not respect your time and your boundaries. They, they so wouldn't is, know, would they? Like, how would they know if you didn't clearly articulate? They just wouldn't exactly, know. They would just see... Readers. Yeah, they would they would not know. So I think it's really important to are you saying clearly articulate them? Yes, clearly yep. articulate them because mm -hmm. of the fact that people do not they can't read your mind, right? So a perfect example of this is uh, we were talking about a client's texting very late at night. Now, if you go to respond and your go to is to respond, what you're doing there is you're opening the gateway for your client to understand that, hey, I can text her whenever I want. Hey, I can text them whenever I want. And so if that ends up happening, then now they know or their understanding of your boundary is I can text this person whenever I want. Right? So there really isn't a boundary. It's more like, oh, OK, so free for all. I can do that. Trust me, I have made that mistake many times over. And can I say that that, you know, just like children, once you allow for that to happen, it's very, it's much more difficult to rewrite that boundary if you don't establish it first. So I'm having that kind of situation happen now because now I'm creating boundaries. And so some of my clients are like, well, I've always been able to text her. I've always been like, who answered your phone? I was like, it's my assistant. Oh, you have an assistant now. Yeah. <laughs> so... So those are things, if you don't establish those boundaries right off the bat, you know, then people sometimes have a difficult time accepting them after the, after the fact, right? Um, now, saying no and knowing when you can say no. And this is, if we establish your boundaries, then you know that people will most likely have an idea that, hey, she might say no to this, right? So they're already kind of pre-thinking this, but let's talk about saying no in life and in business to things that don't serve us. Because again, like Allison had mentioned, we're conditioned to our parents, right? So if, if they made us do something, it was like, we didn't have a choice. We said no. But as adults now, we have a choice. So if there is something that doesn't serve you, something that doesn't sit well with you, that isn't in line with how you feel, with what you want, 
then we must learn how to say no to those things. And this goes beyond even work. You know, sometimes you get invited to certain things and you're kind of like, oh, I don't really want to go. But then you say yes, because you're like, oh, I feel obligated. You know, understanding ourselves in that aspect is that it's okay to say no. It's okay to, to you know, be like, sorry, I can't help you with that, right? And then also there are some non-negotiables. They're understanding what our non-negotiables are because when we are in tax season, um, I'm not sure if most of you are in the tax industry or accounting industry, but when you are in this work environment and when you're in this type of industry work, it's there's things that are non-negotiable for us that unfortunately, you know, we have our clients needs, but we also have a family. And if, you know, your child's sick or something happens in 2020, right, we experienced such a crazy amount of change that what is a non-negotiable for you, you know, and, and not allowing the business or the client or your boss or, whichever thing come before the priorities that you have as a mom or as in, in your relationship, you know, so understanding what are non-negotiables for us, because again, once we learn how to establish boundaries for those around us, they'll know what is a non-negotiable for us. So something in my life that I can share with you is with my children and my family around me that knows tax season, Right. So although my children might feel like, oh, it's tax season again, you're going to be gone. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, OK, well, a non-negotiable between us so that they feel like they have a say is that I will, will be tucking them in at night. So I have to make sure that a non-negotiable is that I get home in time for bedtime so that I can say good night so I can, you know, put them in their bed and yell at them before because they don't <laughs> want to brush their teeth. <laughs> so, you know, do our little routine, our song and dance. And then clients always want immediate service. We, we all face this, okay? Guys, no matter what level of, of service you provide, no matter what type of business, we all have clients and clients have needs and clients are going to want something now, right? Because they are the only thing in the universe and they have no idea how many emails, text messages, phone calls you get. So how do we establish that with clients? Now, again, going back to number one, understanding your boundaries and explaining those boundaries to people. So if we can acknowledge the client, if we can let the client know that, hey, I got your message, I heard you, I, I'm here, you, you have my attention. But setting, this is how you set a boundary with a client, letting them know the expectation. So you can respond and say, I'll get back to you within 24 hours, I will get back to you in 48 hours, because chances are things don't necessarily, are like things aren't set on fire, so now all of a sudden you have to, but what, what happens is that we practice reaction, right? Because I know a lot of us feel and Allison, please, you know, chime in on this. When, you know, you get an email, what's the first thing we want to do? Respond. What? Yeah. Right? There's actually a fantastic question about this, Demori, that you could yes. sort of weave into your answer here. Yes. Um, the person who asked it is that has actually logged in as anonymous, so I don't know who to give credit to. Um, but the question is an excellent one, and I think you're you're in the process of answering it. But I think I'd like you to be really precise about this question because it's such a good one. Um, how do you learn to handle the unhappiness of clients while maintaining your boundaries? I schedule my workout, but it seems everyone wants to be put ahead of everyone else. Okay. It's a really well, good question. It is. It's an excellent question. And I am going to give you this answer as though you are my friend. You are a priority. So why can't you put yourself in front of everyone else? Yeah. The and then I think also set expectations like you were getting to it. You were saying like, if like people aren't upset if you tell them they'll have it next week, but they mm -hmm. will be upset if you say you'll have it next week and then it's two weeks. It's two weeks. Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's like clearly. Mm -hmm. And understanding your workflow. So if yeah. if exercising is a priority for you and that is essential to your well-being, 
then what you can do is respond to your client or whoever's needing your attention and saying, I will get back to you in a couple hours, but, but make a commitment to do that. So yep. there's different ways and we'll talk about it a little bit more on how to use tools for you to be able to give these deliverables and to be on top of these things so that you don't forget, because I know what that's like. I know when there's a text message, I, I try not to look at it or open it because I, I know I'll forget. If it stays unread, <laughs> then I, know I can get back to it, right? Yeah. But the truth of the matter for our anonymous attendee is that putting yourself as a priority is just as important as your clients. And so we don't have to explain certain things like, oh, I'm working out. We can just acknowledge them because that's really what they want. They want acknowledgement. Yep. Yep. And letting them know, hey, I, I, I heard you. I have your message. Let me get back to you either in a couple hours, 40. Give yourself the time that you need in order to respond, depending on what they need, right? Because some things might require more attention than others. And so I'll give you a perfect example. I was sick. And um, unfortunately, I had gotten COVID. And I got one of those worst ones of those. And I had messaged a client. A client messaged me and I said, I'm, I'm ill. And yet they still kept texting me <laughs> and asking about their taxes. And so I was like, uh, but then I stopped responding and they were upset, but you know what? It was kind of like, I'm, I'm sick. I'm sorry. I there's, I'm sorry, but not really sorry because you have to understand that I have to take care of myself because of the fact I can't take care of you. If I don't you don't want to myself. answer on your taxes when I'm delirious. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You don't want me to tell you something nuts, right? Here, so, sure. I'll tell you this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that is what you want to do. You want to we make need to learn a how to say no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You want to make yourself a priority just as much as they are a priority. Yeah. Um, learn when and how to delegate. We have to start now, guys. This, no matter where you are, if you're a business owner or if you are in leadership, if you're in a specific role, learning how to delegate, and this is not only in business, but in your personal life, is something that we all have to learn now. Um, getting a task manager. So I use, getting a task manager is absolutely incredible because of the fact that what happens when we have tasks, when we have things that we have to get done and we don't, what, what happens to us, right? <laughs> it's in your head. Oh yes. my gosh. It stays all in your brain and then you don't go to sleep because you're constantly running the list oh, horrible. and you're like, shoot, I'm going to forget to do this. Or, you know, so it plays, it plays back and it plays is back and let me tell you if you're younger in the crowd okay so we have a good mix here in in our panelists here so so Lindsay, because you're probably the youngest one um as you're as you're growing you'll know that keeping those tasks in your brain because when you're younger you can probably do it but as you get older it becomes such a just like it can just ruin your sleep. It can just mess a bunch of things up. It goes so, on autoplay over and over. Exactly, and it's like it does. you, you're afraid you're going to forget somehow. So you, you just keep playing it. You just keep replaying yep. the list and the list and the list. But what happens when we sleep bad? Then it's it leads to bad health. It leads to all these other things, right? So we really want again to make ourselves a priority, and so getting a task manager really, really can help for your peace of mind so that you can rest so that you can move on, you know, Hey, I wrote it down and now I can move on and think of something else, right. Or think of sleep. Now let's talk about controlling our thinking. What is the age old saying? If something needs to get, if you want something to be done, right, do it yourself. Right. But how do we manage to get ourselves out of that mentality? Because it is an age old saying for a reason, because a lot of us take on responsibility of things because we feel like nobody else can possibly do it the way that we can or the right way or however we want to we want to phrase that. But the truth of the matter is that we have to learn how to train people. If you want something done right, train the right person to do the right thing, then you don't have to do it. 
And this is part of that delegation and creating a, and having a task manager so that you can now move forward and give somebody else the empowerment so that they can do something right for you. Now let's go on using technology, my favorite thing. So for task managing on, on an everyday workflow and that helps my, ease my mind, I use a task manager called Trello. And this is where I put in a lot of information just that needs to get done throughout the day so that I know who to assign it to. And this is sort of my notepad per se. You know, we all have different things that we use to take our mind off of a certain task or things that need to get accomplished. This is my notepad. So I use task managers as my notepad. When I'm thinking of something, I go on there. Instead of writing it out, I go on Trello. I write it down so that I know who to assign it to at a later time. Lizio does a great job of this as well. And this, I use Lizio for my clients uh, thing. So if, let's say I write it down, my notepad is Trello, then I know, okay, I need to create this task in Lizio for a client so that they can get their stuff done so that they can get their part done but now i know i did it right because that's another thing that it can slip our minds sometimes i don't know about you guys but i know that i'll be like did i do that <laughs> right because we're managing so many different people and so many different things that we might forget like did i did i do that did i complete that so this is a great way to kind of cross reference and as tax accountants if you were an accountant or a tax accountant out there i don't know about you guys but the triple check is the real deal. Like you check once, you check it again, and you make sure <laughs> the last time to stamp the certification that you did it, right? So this is something that we use using technology in our favor to help us, again, flow better, to help us not feel like we're competing with priorities and getting all of the stuff that's in our mind out. Now value of your time and this is why you want to use technology and why you want to go back getting a task manager controlling your thinking using technology because our time is valuable we have so many things to do right all of us are busy we have so many roles to complete things we want to accomplish so our time is valuable and we want to be able to give our time to those things that are important to us and also be able to um, provide value to our, ooh, I hope my internet's okay, um, be able to provide that time value to our friends, to our family, to our clients, and also even to our employees. You know, for us, training our employees and giving them that power to be able to have some autonomy and to be able to really say like, I can be of support to this person is such a great way to build another individual. And that, that guys honestly is leadership, is you giving the other person tools so that they can support you better, right? Because I mean, how, how do yeah. people know how they can support you, right, Allison, unless, unless we tell them? Yeah, the, the thing about this, when you and I were talking about this presentation, the thing that stuck in my mind is the concept of, of moving slowly now to move faster later. Oh, 100%. And so you were, you were, it was really good about, you know, that you were willing to take that time to train your staff, even though, you know, it may take them longer. Yeah. Right. But and once you, oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. It's okay. I, I, threw it in it. I, I, I saw that we were going that direction. I'm sorry. Yes, it's true. It's that momentum because yeah. the simple fact is that all of us want to move faster, right? So when we yeah. go back to the age old saying, if you want something done right, do it yourself. But listen, you keep doing it yourself, you're going to be staying there yourself. <laughs> You'll never get out if you if you don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And 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 understanding what are the things that you should really be doing. Like if you're a CPA, then you want to be working on the CPA level stuff. But if you've got some bookkeeping things that you can train someone else to do, then have them do that. Right. And, and yes. you can check it, but you do exactly. need to train it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's how also for myself and what I've seen in other clients. Um, yeah. I've seen it time and time again because I've done like CFO work where I've gone in to see how the client is doing things and, and what ends up happening is that they don't want to spend the time to train their staff and let me yeah. tell you each of those clients that I have seen 
that have had a hard time giving time to train because it takes time, right? Um, they have really struggled because of the fact that every they have to handle everything themselves. So yeah. it's a little bit of that control factor, mm -hmm. but in order for us to gain better momentum, it, it is slowing down to be able to do the things that we need to do so that then we can launch forward. And training your staff is so important. If you're in a place where maybe you're just starting out or you're growing, because I, I know what that's like also, you know, when I was taking the leap to hire an assistant, it was difficult because I knew that it's like, okay, now I have to create some sort of like organization for myself because I had it all in my brain. So, you know, training her, but, but it was so important to me because I knew that it's like, I need the support. So I need to take the time to be able to train her so that she knows how to support me better. So these are things that we have to learn right now, how to delegate. And, and guys, this is also at home too. We have to learn how to delegate things at home. We have dishes, we have laundry, we have all those things. Trust me, I am not skilled at any home stuff especially cooking. So I will burn tortillas. <laughs> like, I don't have the attention span. So, so, you know, learning how to delegate those things. And sometimes it can be difficult for some of us, even with home things. But for me, I, I, I rely heavily on my mom. Thank the Lord for her because and then she helps me with the kids and, you know, the food and grocery shopping and all that stuff. So I know those things are taken care of. So learning how to delegate because of the fact that our time is valuable and we want to invest yeah. in the things that are truly important to us and that's going to bring us money and happiness and all those great things. Right. So we've got before we move on tomorrow, we've got a couple of questions, I think, that would be good to, to fit in here. Um, so um so kelly and melissa are kind of asking a similar kind of question okay so melissa's question is what are your best staff training tips when to do it how to do it and then kelly's asking and it's it's a follow-on really i think i'm going to combine the two i think it's also important to inspect what you expect mm -hmm. do you have any tips on the follow-up or checking on your team's work or progress so they're kind of yes. together. How do you train? And then how do you check up? Do you have any tips on that? I do. And let's go back then to the task manager, because I believe that creating a task manager is a great way for the follow up, but also a great way for training. And, and here's why, because we have certain things that we want to get accomplished in the day, right? Our, our mindset, the things that we want to get accomplished in the day need to be written down somewhere. So that's the first thing. So you could either use Lizio to input task in, or you can use a task manager for your daily tasks where you know to assign certain things. Um, so when you're writing these things down in your task manager, then you can give your team a list of priorities because in these task managers, you can, you can sort by like, this is a priority, this is a priority. Um, second, third, you can tag them with colors, you can do a due date, you can do all those great things. And then the follow up is if they did it or if they accomplished it, then they can tell you through the task manager, hey, I accomplished this. And so now you know that it was done. So that follow up, because that, that is true. What it ends up happening a lot of times is we'll have something in our mind and then we're like, did that get done? Right. So where do we look? then we have to call that's where that visibility or, that task manager helps you look and see and then you can go and review the work exactly yeah. and it creates a better flow for yourself and mm -hmm. for your staff now in order to do like when to do it and how to do it because sometimes that can be depending on how uh the person that you're hiring um, if they don't know what is a priority in the industry or if they don't know what's a priority to you again communicating. Yeah. So this is what task managers allows us to do is to communicate and convey to your staff. This is a priority by either placing colors, due dates, things like that, so that they know, okay, I have to take care of this first. Yeah. Right. So communication is definitely another big key component. Now, remember that if you are training someone or if you're in the process of creating some sort of training, have the person create a training manual 
or have the person write that down so that they have a sense of reference because sometimes let's say we teach someone how to do something like for me a big component of my training is i let them know um make sure to take notes because yeah I, you know i'll be happy to address it once twice or help you through the problem but then after that we really need to get you on a steady flow and understanding how to do it or i mean this isn't me, but I won't answer the question unless they come with a solve with a solution that they. Oh, that's a good one too. Yeah, you can say, well, what? Well, tell me how you would solve it. Yes. Yes. How, because yeah, because then you're building that trust, right? Because the more they get it right, then you can be like, okay, yeah, that's and a good one. And also allowing them to know that they have to come with solutions. They have mm -hmm. to be problem solvers themselves. Because if we constantly solve the problem for them, then they don't do anything to kind of do the yeah. research right themselves. And also being gracious when mistakes are made. That's yeah. a big one. Um, because when you allow someone to make those decisions, and if they're bad calls, then they're bad calls. But but you want to be gracious when those bad calls are made because people normally are afraid to make big decisions or to make any decision when it comes to something that's not their their business or their thing. Most employees have a hard time making decisions. So when it comes to making a decision and if it's the wrong decision, just gently correcting and saying, okay, that that wasn't what we would normally do, but this is, you know, and this is why. And, and so giving them that correction, because trust me, when you make mistakes, you, you commit to memory that mistake that you made. So, so those normally stay in your brain a lot longer. So being gracious with your staff as well when they're making those mistakes and when they, you know, don't, don't make the right decision. Okay, so understanding what needs to get done in a day. Again, this is kind of like, again, in priorities, how do we prioritize what we know that needs to get done in a day? Because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes you come in to the office and your mind is filled with how many things need to get done, right? I had a Monday yesterday and that's how it was. It was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I just have to get so many things done. Write it down. And if you think I'm kidding, <laughs> okay. Yes, I use my task manager. Yes, I use those things. But when my brain is on a hundred miles an hour, right? The high achieving for us high achieving people, we have tons of things that need to get done in a day. I write it down. And here's the reason why sometimes the writing down can be quicker than our task managers and our technology and things like that. Because then you can transfer the information on what needs to get done with who and who needs to do what. Also, knowing what requires your time, your valuable time, and something that is internal knowledge, something that requires more training, or something that can be done as called a mon monkey task because anyone can do them. They don't require a lot of special training. They don't require a lot of internal knowledge. It's just a task, something that is very easy, like scanning, stuffing envelopes, mailing out things, things like that that don't really require a lot of special training. Now, and also when you write it down, you can decide if, if this is a great training opportunity, if you have the time for a training opportunity, or if this is just like something I need to get done and out of the way, but you can highlight it to say, you know what, this is something I should train someone on to do because let's say you're the only one that knows how to do it or you're the only one that knows what's going on. Yeah, um, it also helps. I love the, the, the insight about like writing it down because um, it also helps you organize what are the most important things. Like if, if you've got a due date, you mentioned earlier, there's due dates. Well, if there's a due date coming, that's a non-negotiable. So it's yes. like, you've got to meet that due date. But if it's something that could be done a little bit later, then writing it down allows you to have to, that kind of internal it. chat with yourself, right? Yes. And also, you know, what happens is in a day, sometimes a lot of things pop up, people will message you, email you, things like that. And so what happens again, we store things in our brain and then we think, oh my gosh, did I forget? Did I remember? Did I, <laughs> yeah. What did I do? Right. So allowing yourself to write it down, 
for me, writing it down, sometimes I'll move it to my task manager. Sometimes I'll just keep it in my notepad just because I want to cross off or do what I need to do. But, you know, writing it down can give you that component of organizing it as well. Like what's going to be what's going to be on your task manager? What's something that you need to accomplish for yourself right now that you can do or assign it to someone? Or is it a client task? Things like or, that. or do you need more information from the client? That's why I love client tasks, because sometimes clients will ask you for something, but you realize they haven't actually sent you the documents you need. Yes, exactly. You're like, hey, I would love to do that, but here's the documents I need. So you yes. can kind of almost like get that task done quickly by just saying, okay, you put it into a holding pen, right? Because they, they owe you stuff. Because Exactly. And yep. then that creates also the visibility for you to see. Mm -hmm maybe what you accomplish or even what you gave to the client. Cause like I mentioned before, I, as great as my memory is and as great as I can be, you know, on top of things, there are times where I'm like, did I do that? <laughs> did I send that to the client? Did I, you know, so we have those moments. Yeah, exactly. And so we want to go back somewhere to where we know it's like, okay, where did I, did I do this? So that's a great way for us to feel like, okay, a, a sense of peace because we know we accomplished or we did what we needed to do. Now the money, the gold here, balancing competing priorities and how can we balance? What tools do we need in order to really truly come into a balance of our priorities. And this is something that if, if you're a mother here, if you're a parent, I'm not going to say mother, but if you're a parent, if you're a part of a blended family, if you're married, if you, boyfriend, spouse, dog, cat, fur baby, anything in your life that your heart will get tugged because you know, our doggies spend all day at home and we want to spend time with them too. So, you know, there's moments in our life that just, we're going to have these different roles and these things that are going to need our attention and that we're going to feel like, I, I want to give it that attention. It's not even almost like needing your attention. You want to give it your attention. And we're going to talk about like crystal and I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the uh, the analogy of crystal balls and rubber balls and how some moments are crystal balls that if they fall, they shatter, but some can be rubber balls that if they fall, they bounce, right? So in life, we have these moments, we have these, these juggling, we're juggling these task priorities, uh, values, relationships, friendships, all these things. But some things are just crystal. They're, they're that important, that they're that precious, that we cannot allow for them to fall or go to the wayside. And there's moments that are rubber moments where we know, hey, if it falls, it's going to bounce back up and we can take care of it later. So understanding what those moments are in our life. Um, because for the most part, I believe a lot of us tend to think that we can only do one or the other. So the ebb and flow is important, right? Because it's either we do this or we don't do it, right? So sometimes we'll go to those extremes. But the truth of the matter is we get to choose and we get to, it gets to come in and out and we get to ebb and flow with our day, with the things that we want to accomplish with our life. And this is how we balance those things is by understanding that it's not a give all, take all. If not, it doesn't work. No, we get to flow with the day. We get to flow with things. And one of the ways that you can maybe sort these things out for yourself, because I do this, I did this prior to us coming on, I sat down for some quiet time. And this is time, and I'm not going to lie and say that it's always just like, you know, easy, like, ah, you know, no, I have my moments when I'm sitting and I'm like, I need to write it down, right? Because, <laughs> because something comes to your mind. But, but having some time for yourself and, and creating these things in the day, uh, I don't know if, if any of you, and please, you know, comment if you've done meditation, if you've heard of meditation, if something you're considering, um, know that with meditation, it's not something that it's like, oh, I have to sit there and hum the whole time and all of these things. And it has to be done in the morning because I know a lot of people encourage you to do it in the morning. And of course, 
but take the time when you need it, guys. Take the moment when you need it, because the truth of the matter is, is that we are in a different place in life right now. Obviously, all of us have hit, right? 2020 was like crazy. And then 2021 doesn't seem like it's going to be, <laughs> um, I don't know, it's going to be a whole other thing. But sometimes we need those moments. Sometimes we need that time to just take a break, to just say, you know what, I need some silence. I need to sit here, maybe put your headphones on, something, even if it's just five minutes, put that into practice for yourself because days get chaotic no matter what. But allowing ourselves that moment to say, hey, you know what, I need to take a step back. I need to take a moment to myself. That can allow for creativity. You know, it, it opens us up so that we're no longer burnt out and feeling guilty. And it happens, I'm 100% with you on, it happens to all of us, okay? So there's moments in our life, there's moments in our work flow and everything where it's just kind of like, oh my gosh, this is so much, but yet we don't stop to just take a step back and to kind of relax ourselves, to kind of see, regroup, right? Because we're just still going. And you can't, if you continue to go and go and go, it ultimately would lead to burnout. I've been there many times before, and I really had to learn and put into practice hey, I need to take a time out. I need to step back so that I don't burn out so that I can provide everyone with a better version of myself. Because that's another thing too, is that we provide a better version of ourselves when we take care of ourselves. So going back to making, you know, how do we um, work out? You know, she wanted to work out and everybody else wanted her attention. Well, you are also part of that priority because that's the only way you give better to other people. Allison, you have a take on this? Well, I just was, I was just thinking a couple of things as you were saying this through and um, just to check with the, check with the group on the call. Um, you know, self-care is not being selfish. That's right. Like it's actually the opposite because, you know, you really have to be sure that, you know, you are able to like that your tank is full, at least as full as it can be. Because mm -hmm. we're all moving at such a speed. The other thing I was thinking about when you were talking about creativity is stepping away. It really is important to step away from your computer oh, yes. when you have that five minutes or the 10 minutes mm -hmm. or whatever it is, or the 15 minutes, whatever you can manage. Mm -hmm. um, Maggie's chiming in about um, the creator of the, uh, the meditation app Headspace created a documentary. Oh, mm -hmm. So check that out. And the Headspace is a great app, but you don't have to do it like for me, I literally just walk out into the garden and smell something. Yes, <laughs> it yes. can take five minutes, right? It yeah. can be anything, anything that brings you joy, truthfully, yeah. honestly, it just could take a moment to sit and be grateful for things. If, you know, if someone's annoying you go sit outside and be like, I'm so grateful for them because it is causing me to grow because I'm not responding. I'm, <laughs> I'm growing because I'm not lashing out yeah. or, you know, so taking the time for any, anything that brings you joy, anything, even if it go to Starbucks. And Megan says, don't bring your phone, which I think is important. Oh, yes. I think your phone during that time needs to kind of stay on your desk. It does. Yes. Yeah. I use insight. Most phones have insight. It's a free app. And I just, I play, um, the beach sounds because I love the ocean and that makes me feel that reminds me of ebb and flow because and I flow. hear I hear the crash the pullback the crash the pull and you back, breathe so. you breathe actually with the rhythm of it that's yeah. right so Brit do something that you enjoy if that's mountain sounds bird sounds things that that truly bring you some sense of peace and joy for yourself. Guys, this isn't woo woo stuff. This is stuff for you to take care of yourself because the truth of the matter is that we don't want to be, you know, burnt out, feeling crappy all the time. Like we have to kind of get in with the times values because you know why? Because of the values, because we have to value ourselves. We have to value our health. We have to value what is important to us and not just work isn't everything, you know, our, our job, our, the things that we do, our title, our position, isn't everything in life, isn't, that's not who we are all the time, you know, that's what we do, 
these are the services we provide, but that's not who essentially we are. We are people that enjoy things. We are people that want, want people to see us for who we are, right? Not just what we do, what we can provide. And so truly allowing yourself those moments to, to grow and to have those moments to yourself so that you're able to provide better for others. Trust me, taking care of yourself is the number one thing you need to do in all of this. <laughs> all right. So why your client experience is so important. This is hot. Okay. So we want to, <laughs> this is top number one thing here as well. Well, all of them, right? But why your client experience is so important. Um, as you guys get to know me, and if you visit, uh, if you ever get to visit us in Huntington Beach, my attention to detail and my attention to quality is something that is a priority overall because it represents who I am as a person. My environment and where I work and what I provide is something that is so important to me. And I'm going to tell you why it matters. And when it comes to technology and the things that we use to represent ourselves, because of the fact that the client experience can be monetized. And although money isn't everything, but we get to charge for our value. I mean, if you think, hey, I wanna provide a certain service, people pay for the experience. People pay for the experience. Hmm. Starbucks, the, e the e myth experience. So technology to calm the chaos because of the time, technology can save us on time, can present to our clients something that we're offering something different than other companies, allows for delegation, a client self-serve, and you can charge more. <laughs> um, and this is so important because of the fact that it's true, clients will pay more because of the experience that you provide. And we want to be able to provide to clients the modern technology. Some people might be resistant, but guys, all of us have phones and have, think, just let me give you a food for thought here. How many of you just love those apps that make your life easy, right? That you're just like, oh my gosh, I just love this app because <laughs> I don't have to do this, right? If we think of like Instacart, DoorDash, what are all of these things selling? They're selling convenience, right, Allison? Yeah, I mean, they just, I'd love it if people would put in the chat what apps they're, what apps they really love and why. Yes, that um, would be great. Yes, please let us know. Because the truth of the matter is, is that all of us, if we're able to use an app or use something that makes our life easier and more convenient, like, how awesome is that, right? And so for our clients, for you to provide a better service for your client, think of, think of yourself as a client. Like if you were your own client for, for whatever business you have or whatever you're doing, um, would you still like you? Would you still do business with you? Yeah. <laughs> because are you giving yourself that time back? And, and so something that is so great about using technology is that we get to give our clients what we want for ourselves. And that's giving us our time back, giving us convenience, giving us all these things that we ourselves want, right? So we want to service our clients the same way that we want to be served, the same things that we want. They probably have those same values. Yeah. And let's talk about, would you still be using these? Um, right technology so would we okay the station wagon <laughs> if you you know would you be driving a 20 year old car i know people think 20 year old car they think like classic cars no no sweeties the station wagon would be your car so i don't know about anybody else but i haven't seen a station wagon in <laughs> forever Lindsay, maybe the subaru seconds for the station wagon <laughs> but it's newer so we wouldn't, oh my gosh, the old computer, like we barely have patience for, for our computers when they glitch or when they take half a second 
and we're like, hurry it up. Why are you not working? Right. We're like flipping keyboards and it's like, come on. So using technology for our clients and for ourselves, knowing that, again, we're trying to give to our clients the same things that we want for ourselves. And that's value of our time, giving us accessibility, allowing us to, you know, do things quicker and, and more efficiently, effectively, all those great things. Yeah, now, we've got some oh, wonderful, I'm okay. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but we've got some wonderful apps that were listed here. Okay, um, yes, let's go through them. Yeah, so Lindsay kicks off with mobile banking for me means oh. I don't have to go to the bank during business hours. Does everybody yes. remember, remember having to do that? Oh, yes. Oh and now God. you just like snap a photo of the check and you don't have to get to and the deposit? bank. Yes. Do you remember getting to the bank before it closes? Like that, that's like not a thing anymore. Um, yes. HubDoc, Candy uses HubDoc. Um, Amy has a comment, the modern day SUV is just a version of the station wagon, but taller. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Is. Yeah, it's but true. now we have electric SUVs. Um, um, Teresa says yearly, it made filing 1099 so simple. Oh. And Instacart, same reason oh, and happy mm -hmm. to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And then Karen is saying Marco Polo allows oh. quick me video messaging with family um, mm -hmm. without needing to be available for a video call at the same time. Um, and then Candy says Slack and Asana. So all of mm -hmm. these things are, 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 are helping you communicate like with the world in a way that's more convenient for you. And I think tomorrow yes. your point is that needs to be applied to your practice and how you're thinking about how your clients work with it you. It is. And, and something, you know, that Allison, you and I had talked about, and, and this is where we're going to, I'm going to do the shameless plug for Lizio because Lizio honestly was what I needed when I needed it. And I decided to go for it because of the fact that it's like, you know what, I need freedom for myself, freedom for my client. I'm getting so tired of people. Can I get a copy of my tax return? Oh, Lord, help me. So, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, because you can't email those, right? So what are you asking your client to do? They'd have to log into a portal. And like, yes. how many times do clients call you to log into a portal? It's really hard to do. It's hard for them to do that. It's not intuitive. Yeah. And they it's can't not, do it like so, from, they can't do it from their phone. It's like really hard. And I'm going to so, tell you what sold me was the app because yeah. let's go back to this again of using resources because yeah. when I would tell clients, um, scan your documents or I don't have a scanner. Guys, I don't have a most scanner. people do not have scanners. They use yeah. their phones as their scanners. And even then, they don't realize that there's apps that can scan doc documents and, and all of those things. So we're kind of teaching our clients. But think of, think of Lizio has an app where they can take pictures of the documents and it converts them to PDF. So they don't have to do anything extra. All they do is go into the one place, right? So what are we doing there with the client experience? We are giving them back. We are empowering them to do these things that would become so much more easier for them to send us the information. And then also, like I mentioned earlier, before when I first started my practice, it was like, email, email me your documents or email me all these things. And what would happen was that clients would take individual pictures and send me 50 billion emails. And then I have to go through all of the emails to sort out what, what was what, right? And so now we have this awesome platform where they, they have the power to upload their documents and do what they need to do. And then it allows for my assistant to say, hey, we have these documents. Now, now I know she puts it in my queue that I have to work on this tax return of when it's due and all these great things, right? So think of the client experience and think of technology as that we are giving the power back to our clients just as we want our power back to ourselves to allow us for time management to allow us to balance our life and to allow us to really just do the things that we love and, and get back to the sauce right because we we don't want to be shoveling through paper shoveling through emails doing all these things and this is why technology is so important and Sorry, not sorry, but the shameless plug of Lizio because, because you want to give your clients that experience. And let me tell you, as we've been doing it this year, because our clients are now jumping into Lizio, um, the feedback is great because although, you know, some people might be like, oh, I have 
to click and do a login and all this stuff. The seller is, it has an app and in the app, I can message you. And in the app, you can scan your documents and send. And then they're like, oh, I have an, I'm official. I have an app. Oh, you have an app. You're official. You right? have an accountant app. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, wow. Okay. Now, now, you know, now they could be like, well, my accountant has an app. So I can actually view all of my documents. And then it takes away from this whole, like, can I get a copy of my tax return? Well, people might still ask that. And you could just say, yes, it's on your Lucio app. It's on your client portal. You can access all of your documents there. Exactly. And it takes away from the scanning too. I don't know about you guys, but the world is turning paperless. So we're moving with the times to not have to scan documents and have something you know give a stack full to your assistant and have them scan all these things these things can all be converted to pdf and dropped into lizio into the client portal and their client has access to all of their things so guys not only are you giving yourself that power back for yourself the value all of these things you're giving the client experience something you can monetize because it's different than what other people are doing and so being able to provide that client experience will not only help you, it'll help your client because you're giving them value, okay? So the monetization just comes naturally because you're providing them with the best service, the best value that money can buy, right? Because what happens, what, what, what do we say? Uh, money, like, what is it? Um, our time is like, it doesn't have a, a dollar sign to it, right? Our value, the things that we value don't have a dollar sign to it. So when we're able to take that back and into our lives, there isn't a competition of priorities. We know what our priorities are. We know what we enjoy. We know what we can put first. And there isn't anything to compete because we have it. We've structured it the right way so that we can live our lives and not just be in our emails, in our phones, doing all these other things and, and feeling out of whack, feeling out of balance as though we're not truly living our lives that we want. So I think that is it. And if we have more questions or anything that we want to Yeah, discuss, we can just move on. I think there's a next step slide. Oh, yes. Um, that just sort of, yeah. Oh, Oh, I guess no. Oh. Next steps, yeah. Oh, the next, you've oh actually, this one for yeah, the you've Q actually and a. covered. You've actually no, covered no, no. it. This is the next step. So the next steps for the Q and A. If we have questions and things that we'd like to create in our lives, if we want to create the calm in chaos in our lives, what things we can use and how Lizio can help and technology can help yeah. you create a calm in your life. Um, we also have. Let's see. Awesome. So yeah. we actually have one question, which I think is a really good one. It was asked earlier by Teresa, but um, it I think it's a good one to kind of wrap on. Mm -hmm. Like it, it kind of wraps everything that you've 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 mentioned here. So her question is about learning to say no. Mm -hmm. So how do you say no while not going into how many things you have to do? Like in other words, you don't want to bring your client into your your personal, you know, into what's going yeah. on in your like the messy kitchen, right? Your client doesn't mm -hmm. need to come into the messy kitchen, mm -hmm. or how many weeks out you're already booked. She she says it it feels really apologetic. Mm -hmm. So in truth, it might be three weeks before she gets to what they need. Do mm -hmm. you just say that with no apologies? And yes. so I'm kind of thinking like technology would definitely help because yes. you could you could schedule you could schedule things out. But how do you actually communicate that to the client, Damari? Yes, technology is definitely one of those things. Now, depending on what the client needs, that's where the situation of if, if it requires time, but letting them know the expectation, unfortunately, there, there's gonna be moments where your client that might not be what they like to hear, but again, by not, you don't have to over explain yourself, you know, we have we get to learn that that we know how to run our business and we know what things we want to accomplish or what things are important priorities things like that so if a client um is coming to us something that i say actually quite often is your procrastination is not my stress <laughs> so <laughs> that's right they need to give you what that what you need right yes. so 
So that's where Lysio can help, right? Is you can schedule what they need. They they will know what they can eat and you're giving them a tool to really easily meet it. Yes. So, and also knowing what you can delegate because depending what you on can what delegate. is needed, what is needed, maybe that's something that doesn't have to come from you necessarily, but if right. you have staff, that's something that uh, it doesn't maybe require three weeks out because if it's only coming from you and you're the only one that can do it, then that's when we have to right. now talk to our clients about like, okay, expectations, setting time of expectation, but do, do not apologize unless it's something that you, you feel like, okay, that was my bad, or it was something that I could have yeah. done better or something, but there is no apology because the truth of the matter is that we have a lot of things to accomplish, especially during tax season, especially during this time. Trust me, I tell this to my staff all the time. I'm like, I make people feel like they're the only client I have in this life. And I understand that. <laughs> I understand and I take responsibility. I know I make you feel important and as a priority. And there's no apology for that because I will continue to make people feel that way. But they have no idea how many texts, how many calls, how many messages I get. So that's why we don't have to explain all those things. We can simply set the expectation and give our, give our client the proper, of course, meet, do the deliverables. You know, if you're going to say three yeah. weeks. You're going to meet sure. your deadlines. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Be sure to, to have those deadlines. So setting the expectation. So for us, when we have people scanning their documents and, and putting them in, if they don't have a set appointment, we schedule them about two weeks out so that they know, okay, in two weeks or at least two weeks, I'm going to wait. And, and we do our best to deliver on the two weeks. Yeah. Now I know who's a priority, right? Our corporate clients are a priority because March 15th is the first deadline. So understanding and, and explaining to our clients the same thing is that if you're not getting your documents in, then you're moving further down the line. And so, yeah, and, it, and there's people that come and I know you guys have had this happen to you. The procrastinators, the procrastinators that come on April 1st or April, whatever, 15th or <laughs> whatever date, Right. They feel and they want to get this you're, done. You're going on extension, baby. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you have to you have to set that expectation for your clients. And let me tell you, sometimes it might not pine out. Maybe some clients might not like it and, and you might lose some clients. But let me tell you, as much as you might lose clients, you'll gain clients. And I have lost clients. I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not. Um, uh, what's it called? I'm not. Uh, it happens to me too. It happens. So yeah. It happens. It yeah. happens all the time. We're not going to be for everyone, but the people that are for you are going to understand your boundaries. Yeah. Number one boundary for me, if you come on April 1st, expect an extension Yeah. because again, I have to think ahead of what things I need to accomplish. And if there's any chaos or anything that we want to get done, right? I don't want to be on April 15th here yeah. until midnight. I just don't, that's not how I work. So understanding how you work, what works for you and explaining that or not explaining it, but setting the boundaries, right? So right. understanding your boundaries and therefore you can explain what those are so that your clients understand. And the right client will respect your boundaries because they understand it. Because imagine how would they feel if you're constantly like yeah. messaging them, hey, where are your documents? Hey, where are your documents? Hey, where are your documents? <laughs> right? <laughs> they don't want that either. So vice versa. Awesome. Well, we could clearly, there's so much more we could discuss on this, yes. right? Yes. Um, I think there's one more slide just to leave so people can understand um, uh, if they want to, you know, if they want to uh, follow the blog or uh, mm -hmm. go to YouTube, understand a little bit more about Lysio. And then Lindsay has put some um, resources in the chat. Um, we also have an ongoing series for the the year of the client. So we have a couple more webinars. We have Linda Artisani talking about how to um, gather your, how to get your clients to respond on time. Mm -hmm. So that's an element of what you had touched on today, Damari. Yes. Um, and then we also have Jeannie Whitehouse talking about stop hounding your clients because of course she loved, <laughs> she, there is a better way. So again, talking about that client experience and the relationship. Mm -hmm. But I really want to thank you, Damari, for sharing your you, expertise yeah. today. Um, we had a good crowd. It was great questions. Yes. And, um, and we will be sending this webinar out to everybody.
Okay, so, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Damari. Thank you, thank Lindsay. You. And you, everybody guys. have a wonderful, wonderful tax season. We yes, really, really yes. appreciate you. Okay. Stay healthy, stay safe, put yourself as a priority. That way you have a better and tax don't season. feel guilty about yes, it. Yes, do not feel guilty. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.